Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to episode 19 of our Top 5 Fridays news videos. Uh, thanks as always for joining me and pretty big week for news. Um, before we get to that, I've got a couple just pieces of kind of general information or housekeeping, whatever you want to call it. Um, first of all, there's only a few days left in our August 2021 ski promotion. Um, basically, if you buy a 2021 ski, you'll get a Scott Team Issue pull for a dollar, and we've been giving away $300 gift certificates throughout the month of August, and we should be giving away at least two more of those in the last few days of the month. Um, so still an opportunity to get some really nice pulls for a dollar and, uh, you know, maybe get a $300 gift certificate too. Um, next up, starting next week, we will be sharing a new series of videos on YouTube. Um, it's going to be, we're calling it right now the Chairlift Chat Speaker Series. Um, and basically we wanted to kind of reach out to some people in the industry, some athletes, some, you know, people of high importance in the ski industry uh, and just chat with them and just have a fun, fun, just talk about skiing in general. You know, we're not going to cover anything specifically. It's not going to be about ski review stuff or, or anything like that necessarily. Um, just some fun, good vibe ski energy going into the season. Uh, and you might be wondering why I am wearing this leather jacket. Some of you may recognize this as Mike Hattrip's actual jacket um, from way back in the day. This is like the K2, uh, K2 team jacket from a while back. Uh, and I'm wearing it because Mike Hattrip is going to be our first featured skier in this series. Um, so check out that next week or, or keep an eye out for that next week it should be dropping towards the end of next week and you actually have an opportunity if you want to leave a comment um, you've basically got today and through the weekend of a question that you might want me to ask my cat trip um, and i can't promise that i will get to all of them but at the end of the interview i will certainly ask him some questions taken from our youtube audience directly so think about what you might want to ask Mike, Mike Hattrip. He has endless stories to tell. Um, and yeah, I'll do my best to, to work that question in. Um, and before I get to the news, I'm going to take this jacket off because it's hot and I'm under a bunch of lights. Interestingly enough, that thing fits me really well. I must be about the same size as Mike was when he was in his probably young 30s. Uh, Anyways, now we can get to the actual news. First news topic of the week. I expect that you all being informed, knowledgeable ski fans and skiers, you probably have heard this already, even though it just was announced yesterday. Um, so Vail Resorts has shared their COVID-19 policy and their operations plan going into the 2020-2021 ski season which I think a lot of people were waiting for. Um, most noti notably, they will be using a reservation system. Uh, and, and you can read, like it's a really long in-depth letter. And then there's also a really long in-depth page with like a ton of frequently asked questions about the reservation system specifically. So if, you're, if you wanna learn more about it, go check that out. I encourage you to read through it firsthand. Um, I'm going to summarize it. I would not encourage you to just read all the Facebook comments or wherever social, whatever social media platform you use, because there's definitely some people that are skimming it and then like leaving a bunch of comments that aren't quite accurate with what they're trying to do. Um, so basically there is going to be a reservation system and they're giving priority to pass holders. Um, the simplest form of the reservation is that you're going to be making, be able to make week of reservations. So, you know, say it's Monday, I'll be able to make reservations however many days I want for the following week. Um, now, pass holders are also getting 
seven priority reservation days. And that's basically, you can reserve seven days at any point in the season, um, you know, peak season, whenever, you can reserve your seven days and kind of lock that in. So say you're planning a family ski trip or something like that, or, or you really want, you're really planning on skiing a certain time of the year. Um, this is really, really beneficial for people like that. You know, you can plan long term for your ski trips. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, now they're also, they're giving priority to pass holders and specifically here in the sense that they're not even selling lift tickets until December 7th. So you won't be able to ski early season if you don't have a pass. And then you also won't be able to reserve anything until December 7th. So pass holders are basically getting a month of kind of early access to the reservation system so they can lock in their trips before, before it opens up to just the general public for lift ticket sales. Um, so, you know, I think there's, I read through a lot of different feedback yesterday after this news was launched or the announcement was made. I read a lot of people that were bummed about it. Um, I read comments from a lot of people that thought they did a really good job and it's a really good plan. And I am much more of that mindset. You know, I think this is a really, really good place to start. This basically tells me yes, we are going to have a ski season, or at least we're going to try. This is what it's going to look like to start. Um, things may get better. You know, they did say in the letter that if they can, they're going to drop the reservation system. Of course, things could go the other direction too, but let's hope that that doesn't happen. Knock on wood. Um, probably the biggest question that everybody has, including myself, is where are you going to set the actual capacity um, and we reached out to a few people that work within Vail, um, and they didn't have specific answers for us yet. Basically just said it's going to, those decisions are going to be made on a resort by resort basis. I would guess like regionally as well, or, or what region you're in will probably play into that too. Um, so still more to come in this. Uh, we'll, we'll continue watching it. You know, I'm really interested personally about this. I coach part-time, so my ability to be on the mountain to coach is pretty important. So, you know, there's tons of people out there in a similar position to me. So it's going to be really interesting kind of figuring out the nitty-gritty details going forward. Um, but there is a plan. At least Vale has a plan. Um, and then read through, too, because they also talked about chairlifts, gondolas, restaurants, cafeterias rental locations, ski school, they have a plan for all that stuff. Um, in my opinion, it's very well done. I think they covered pretty much everything. I, I commend them for putting out as much information as they did to the public right now. I think, or at least I hope, it's helping to put some people at ease. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to keep watching it uh, and, and be really interesting how Altera and some other companies respond to this and, and, and share their news. Um, so first topic of the week, I know that was a long one, but I think it's an important one. Um, second topic of the week, Squaw Valley has made an official announcement that they will be changing their name. So we talked about this back in late June, I believe. Um, essentially, Squaw was considering changing their name because the actual term Squaw is an offensive derogatory term for Native American women. Um, so. You know, I think this is this is aligning with a lot of things that's going on in 2020. Um, but the people at Squaw decided that perhaps it's time that they should change their name, and they officially made the announcement that they are going to do so, with the announcement of the new name coming in 2021. Um, kind of the general consensus is that they'll probably rename it Olympic Valley. We talked about that a couple months ago when we first talked about this. But I am curious what you would call it. Uh, Let's all, in addition to your question for Mike Hattrip, why don't you leave a comment of what you would name Squaw or, or what the mountain formerly known as Squaw Valley, uh, what would you name it? Um, you know, they're connected to Alpine Meadows, sort of, so maybe you could work something like that into it. I don't know. Let me know what you think or let me know what you think about this topic in general. Um, 
Number three, a lot of, we got a lot of COVID-19 related topics this week. Um, earlier in the summer, this is kind of piggybacking off stuff that we've been talking about all summer, but we, we talked about the suspension of the H-2B and the J-1 visa programs and how that basically was leaving a hole of about 10,000 employees for just ski industries, so, or really just ski resorts. Um, now, basically we've seen, a, our ski resorts are seeing a big increase in applications from college age students. So it's really interesting, you know, how the world works, like when, when at the ebb and flow of, of how the world and the universe works, when, when you're lacking something, generally something fills it from another area that maybe you didn't expect. Um, but basically the uncertainty of collegiate life, lifestyle has resulted in a lot of college age skiers and snowboarders opting to either take a gap year, take a year off, study online, study at home. Maybe if they're studying at home, they're near somewhere near a ski resort where they're choosing to do some work as well. Um, so basically it's opened up a lot of people this age to go work at ski resorts, which as somebody who took their what would have been sophomore year of college off to live in Mammoth for a year, yeah, go, go for it. I mean, I, I, I certainly would never, ever, ever regret that year that I lived in Mammoth. It was one of the most valuable years of my life, in my opinion. Um, certainly extremely memorable, taught me a lot as a kind of punk 19-year-old. Uh, made me grow up a little bit, so I think it's a. I think this is a great thing for college age kids to do, and, and hopefully it helps fill that, fill that kind of hole of of employment in the ski industry. Um, so I think that's cool. I like stories like that. Um, and then the fourth topic of the week is a little bit lighter, a little bit more fun, still COVID nineteen related, um, but Brecken restaurants in Breckenridge are planning to use yurts for kind of hybrid indoor outdoor dining operations so you know with with restrictions on occupancy for these restaurants they're figuring out ways like how many how can we get more people in here to help sustain the business and to help provide a, a place to go for for tourists that, that are visiting breck um, so a lot of restaurants are planning on utilizing yurts as these kind of hybrid dining operations which i think is really cool i I kind of grew up around yurts uh, in more in a, in a summer atmosphere, but yurts are, are really cool buildings. They're not super expensive. Obviously, that is kind of one of the barriers of entry or barriers of, of use for some, for some restaurants is, you know, there is a, a cost of acquisition. A yurt's not free, but they're not like drastically expensive. Um, and then you also need to have some land to put it on. So. You know, I used, I lived in Breckenridge for a year too, and, and Main Street Breckenridge is is pretty packed in there. You know, I, I can just just kind of mentally going up and down the street. There's certainly some restaurants that don't have the space needed to do this, but there are definitely some that do. Um, so this will be really interesting to watch too. I think it's a great you know great solution way to way to problem solve and, and find a good solution. Um, I've got some friends that are restaurant owners out in Breckenridge, so I plan on reaching out to them to get a little more information. And if I do, we'll, we'll come back with that next week and, and try and give you some anecdotal responses from, from people that are planning to do this or not planning to do this. Um, so that's it for news. Edits of the week, we've only got two this week, but they're both really good. So first up, we have Colby Stevenson with an edit called Antidote. Uh, I think that's very appropriately titled, given what's happening in 2020. Um, this was basically Colby's like first time back park skiing. It's at Mount Hood. Um, first time back since COVID lockdowns back in March. Um, and Colby is just a hands down, highly impressive skier. One of my favorite skiers to watch. So definitely encourage you to do that. He's just got such a cool combination of being loose and flowy with a lot of style, but also really powerful and really precise too, um, which I really enjoy watching and wish I could ski like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and then the second edit of the week is the guys from Real Ski Fee always put out just the craziest content. Their latest edit is called Skiing with Tractors. 
Uh, I'll let you use your imagination to what that might include, but you definitely need to watch it too because I guarantee there's stuff in there that you would not expect from the title skiing with tractors. Um, pretty amazing stuff and, and the closing shot is just incredible and must have taken a lot of work to get and probably was pretty darn stressful for everyone involved too. Um, so check that out. That's the news for the week. Uh, don't forget about the 2021 ski promotion. If you want to get a 2021 ski, if you do it in the next four days, you could get some poles and, and maybe a nice gift certificate. Um, and yeah, that's it. We'll talk to you guys next week. Uh, and let me know if you have anything that you want to ask Mike Hattrip, and I'll, I'll try and work it in there. Uh, so we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.